We have learned a lot during the course of the COVID-19 pandemic. We have learned how to wear masks in public spaces, how to entertain ourselves with TikTok challenges and charcuterie boards, and perhaps most importantly, we have learned how a virus can influence our behavior. Of course, most of the behaviors I just described are cultural phenomena caused by fear of contracting illness rather than viral infection itself. But recent evidence suggests that certain viruses may be capable of causing permanent changes to host behavior in the absence of social pressures. One such virus is herpes simplex virus. Now, most of us are no strangers to herpes infections. In fact, it is likely that over two thirds of us are infected with HSV right now. What you may not know is that herpes is more than a pesky occasional cold sore or a stigmatized sexually transmitted infection. Herpes simplex virus has the potential to survive latent within our nervous system for decades, traveling not only to the skin, but also to the brain. Recent evidence has suggested a link between herpes simplex infection, neurodegeneration, and Alzheimer's disease. My research focuses on exactly this question. How does herpes interact with the brain to cause changes to host behavior, like those seen in Alzheimer's disease? My team's first step in addressing this question was to identify the behavioral changes occurring as a result of viral infection in a mouse model. To do this, we used a behavioral task called novel object recognition and tested mice that were chronically infected with low doses of herpes simplex virus. On day one of testing, mice were placed in an environment with two identical objects for 10 minutes. On day two, mice were placed in the same environment, but one of the objects was replaced by something new. We expected typically behaving mice to interact more with the novel object than with the familiar object. After all, the novel object is unexplored interesting. What we found, however, was exactly the opposite. Mice that had been infected with herpes simplex virus did not show the same preference for the novel object, suggesting a deficit in their ability to learn and remember familiar versus novel. I understood this to mean that chronic herpes infection causes behavioral impairments in learning and memory, not unlike Alzheimer's. So the next question became how? For my PhD, I aim to explore how herpes interacts with the brain to affect learning and memory. I hope my work will inform the development of new therapeutics and interventions to reduce the burden of both herpes infection and Alzheimer's disease. And ultimately, I hope to understand not just the relationship between often connected brain and behavior, but brain, behavior, and herpes.